and welcome to Out of the Darkroom on Adorama TV. I'm here at Photo London 2015 and joining me on the show today is London-based photographer Tom Hunter. Tom has spent the majority of his career photographing in his hometown borough of Hackney in East London. He's going to be sharing with us some stories and also some insights into the unusual methods that he uses to capture those pictures. Adorama TV presents Out of the Dark Room with Ruth Medjbear. Tom Hunter, thanks so much for joining me on the show today. Um, your work is fantastic. You've got such an entity, such a body of work at the moment. It's just, and the, the book, you're here, you're doing talks and you're doing signings for your book, The Way Home as well. Um, how's the book been received? Um, I think it's going down yeah. well. Yeah, people seem to like it. Uh, it's a lot of work. It's quite an unusual book in the way that it's uh, some monograph, so it's, it's a bit like your biography in a way. Yeah. So it's, it covers lots and lots of different uh, It's a projects. collection of works, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, over the last sort of 25, 30 years. Wow. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about uh, how you started off in photography, if you wouldn't mind, because you didn't yeah. pick a traditional route the way, you know, uh, how, do, how, did it, how did it happen? Uh, yeah, it's a little bit of a roundabout way. Uh, my dad had a darkroom in our yeah. garden when I was about five years old. Oh. So I think I took my first picture of my sister and of uh, chickens, I used to breed chickens. So I did a few, and I printed them in the darkroom. So I went in, you know, to the darkroom, red light, mm. the picture in the tray, swishing the tray, the picture coming out of yeah. the face, that magic. But then I left school at 15, worked for the Forestry Commission, and then I got bored of that after seven years of doing hard physical labor, swinging the chains around, I thought, do something different. So I went to America, hit around America for, about eight months cool. and then I thought maybe I'll take photographs maybe that would be a nicer way so I came back to London did an evening class got no qualifications yeah. and then I started taking pictures around me in Hackney where I live where I yeah. still live um, and then they my tutor said well you should uh, do a degree course wow. and I never thought about doing that before so I started a degree when I was 25 yeah. so I, I saw the education as uh, a doorway yeah. to another world so I was going to give it my everything I got. So when I did my degree show, I put everything into it. And then, yeah, it got sold to the Museum of London. It got yeah. put in the Guardian. It got Amazing. shown all around the place. Yeah. But um, yeah, I knew what I wanted to do. I knew I needed to have a good degree show. Yeah. I knew to make, make it special. And I knew how to get it out there. So I, I got my head down, and, you know, focused, very focused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe tell us a little bit about your early work, um, kind of the Hackney-based stuff. So, you know, series like The Ghetto, how did that come about? There were thousands of empty properties all around where I lived in Hackney and I ended up living in one. So I ended up meeting great people from all over the world, uh, all over Europe. And it's quite a community sort of grew up around me. So um, it became part of the culture. So I thought this is an amazing culture. I really wanted to capture that. So uh, rather than going off to war zones or going off to tropical islands, I thought I'd actually talk about what's happening around me. So I photographed my girlfriends, my mates, uh, yeah, just life, my homes, the things that was going on around me at the time. In your photographs, you know, particularly your portraits, it's like you're almost not even there. That there's this level of intimacy that they, they're just like, that's just Tom kind of thing, and yeah. they just go about their business. Yeah. Is it important for you to photograph, to, to have that relationship with people first? It's, it's great to have that, and I, I got a bit, I don't know, a bit, ugh. People coming round to our squats and parties, and they weren't part of the scene and they were coming in their cameras taking pictures of us and I said well what are you doing with that mm. and it felt very uncomfortable that they, we would see our pictures in the newspaper saying oh these drug addicts or these people are doing this so I felt very uncomfortable about taking people's pictures without knowing them um, and when I had that relationship with my neighbours and my friends if it's an organic process we were talking about what we could do with the pictures should we put them in a the book shall we use them let's document our lives so it's a much more organic way of working and I got very, you know, inspired by people like um, Sally Mann, who took pictures of her family, yeah. and Nan Golding, who took pictures of, you know, the, uh, the uh, drag scene in New York in, in the 80s and 90s. So all that was sort of bugging me up, and I thought, yeah, that's where I work. I want to talk about my life, not invade someone else's space and take, but I want to be part of something and to give. So there was very much a, I didn't want to be a photojournalist or a photo documentary guy, yeah. um, and I wanted to just celebrate the life around me and give it some dignity, which I thought was really important. So the, the series that you did, the portraits of the residents in their sitting rooms, um, I mean, that's fantastic. You're taking the same 
kind of viewpoint and, and going from room to room to room. But you're giving these people an identity almost. Just and like, and how would you set up something like that? Do you just knock on doors? Did you? How did you get you know access to that kind of series? Yeah, I mean that that's, it takes a long time. So uh, I worked on it was a, a tower block in Hackney across the park from me. I actually did spend about six months living there. Um, but it did, you had to knock on doors, you know, day after day after day after day after day after day. There was 114 flats and I pretty, I've knocked on every door, you know, multiple times. And the first time you knock, no, go away. Second time you knock, what are you doing here? Third time you knock, maybe next time. The fourth time, come back next week. The fifth time, they're not there. And the sixth time, someone says, okay, come on in. And then you get a conversation and then you meet people. But I did see it as, um, not as a, as a photojournalist, I didn't want to try and expose the gritty reality of these people's lives. I really wanted to show these were decent people living in quite a harsh environment. So I wanted to show their, the decency of their, their lives. Well, I, I did treat them as I was uh, portraying royalty, the royal courts. So it's almost like a painter from the royal courts of Spain. So I worked with them as a collaboration. So I had a large format camera with sheet film, five inch by four inch. I used a Polaroid back and then I shot on Polaroid first showed the people the Polaroids and then we, we worked out what was best to show them. So if they looked stupid or their big fat chins were hanging down or they looked a bit awkward, we would change it. So they could be proud of their homes and where they were living and how they could portray themselves to the world. So that was very important for me. So tell us, um, what's next on the horizon for Tom Hunter? What, what are you planning? Are you going to venture out of Hackney? Are you going to do anything else or are you not going to tell us? Um, <laughs> I'm hopefully working with a project with the National Portrait Gallery. And I wanted to do a portrait about the life of uh, Lawrence of Arabia, um, T. Lawrence. So I want to go back and sort of look at the life of Lawrence wow. in the Middle East. Tom, thanks so much for chatting to me pleasure, today. Yeah, yeah it was an here. absolute pleasure. And I can't wait yeah. to see more of your work. And I, I, I can't wait to hear about these, uh, these portraits as well. It's, it's great. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Cheers. you. So that's it for this episode of Out of the Dark Room here from Photo London 2015. If you've enjoyed the show, please feel free to share it or leave me a comment below. I do read them. Also, if you want to brush up on your own photography skills, visit the Adorama Learning Centre where you're going to find lots of workshops and tutorials. Don't forget to subscribe to the Adorama YouTube channel because I'm going to be bringing you back some more videos from Photo London 2015. I'll see you soon. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.